you cannot Google and WebMD and say that you have this, this, this. Um, do not self-diagnose yourself. It's always great to... my channel for anyone who's returning and welcome for anyone who is new if you hear anything behind me it's well in my background it's just because they're cutting down all of the trees um behind uh, all of the buildings where i live so the fun with gentrification they didn't tell us that this was happening and i don't know how long it will be happening so i'm hoping it won't be an issue in my other videos this week but i will try to reduce the background noise when i edit um today's video is just going to be me talking about the romanticism of mental illness on social media and how this whole thing can be either helpful or harmful depending on the severity of what someone has going on. So I will just start off with the definition of mental illness and per usual I'll just link my sources below. Um, it reads as a mental disorder is a psychological or behavioral pattern in a person that causes significant distress that can be measured by a professional. Key wording, that can be measured by a professional. It is a constant part of you. Feeling sadness when you get fired from a job is not a mental illness. We can all feel anxiety, anger, sadness, and even these negative emotions can serve a healthy purpose. If it is persistent, then it might be something to discuss with a therapist or doctor. Where people are not even aware. There are a lot of things that I feel like social media normalize, but if you were to actually do it to someone in person or handle people a certain way, you have no way of predicting how they will act in person versus online. Um, I see this pretty often. I have seen someone I know give themselves uh, so many different diagnoses, but I think that it is definitely important. As someone who studied mental health and I have a degree in it, and I don't know, it's just something that I try to keep up with and acknowledge when I'm interacting with people in my daily life, but you cannot Google and WebMD and say that you have this, this, this. Um, do not self-diagnose yourself. It's always great to, even if you feel like you need to take your time to find the right person. Like me right now, I do not have a dream therapist. Like I'm not in therapy right now, but I am hoping that at least, you know, this month I can find someone, make an appointment. When it comes to being diagnosed with any type of mental illness, um, you will go through assessments, but also you never know when you are seeing a therapist or a psychiatrist, they're taking notes so that they can look at how long these issues persist. And if these issues match up under a certain group of things in the DSM handbook, then they'll most likely diagnose you. And it's not to say that they're always right, right away. Um, I know that I had a therapist ask me to take a test for something and we didn't even follow up on it, but yeah. So I wanna talk about how annoying it can be um to explain mental illness to people first of all we all know that i don't even know what group to talk about but if you think about how idea of being crazy or like having um, mental illness like bipolar or 
depression all of that is more so talked about a little bit more openly and women overall but when it comes to black people specifically men and women there is so much that needs to be addressed and i feel like because there is still a lot of stigma around having mental health issues in communities that are not uh, white people tend to think that they can do all these things to cover it up so they'll try all these things because they don't want anyone to know that they're going through this like a lot of times as a black woman you can't really be vulnerable about what you are going through because it's it's hard for people to give you the support and care that you need whereas um in other groups it's pushed that people need help but to be a part of a, a group of people that has so much generational trauma like it's so crazy um it's it's just so crazy to think about so i want to move on to talking about mental illness and film and social media i say film and social media because everyone has social media and everyone is watching you know netflix whatever and so when you when you get on social media people will give you recommendations on movies right and you may end up on hulu somewhere as well not even just netflix but think about movies where it was a love story about someone who was mentally ill right it was probably a woman that was mentally ill and she was absolutely crazy but the man found that passionate and they just fell in love or it could be the classic lifetime movie where there's two women they become friends and then the new friend you find out is obsessed with the other woman and she wants her husband and and then at the end they just lock her away or she escaped a, a mental health facility like just the the i don't even know how to say it like the shit talking that people do about mental illness like all of us when we're watching a movie or if someone does something that we are not used to seeing and we just say oh this person is crazy and it's like they're not crazy i think that to illness and social media is the worst combination that i've seen <laughs> when i think about the issues that actually stem from having social media or the possibilities of things that can happen to people and their overall well-being just from being online when you think about influencers or celebrities or anyone who has like a large following and the amount of comments and remarks that people make just based off of i'm not gonna i don't want to bring any celebrity names into it so i was trying to say that there are two big celebrities that are in the middle of a divorce and one is a black man and the other one is an armenian woman and i don't know if she's armenian american i feel like she is i don't know if i'm saying it right but or is it armenian so i do realize that i kind of talk all over the place but the point that i was trying to make is just that there are so many layers to unpeel when it comes to how people romanticize mental illness online and so i want the first example of that to be film which is why i mentioned lifetime but i also wanted to mention the the association that women have with being crazy or being um over the top or mentally unwell when it is black women that are clearly going through something with their mental health no one really cares until it's too late or people tell her to just be stronger as black women 
black people in general are just expected to it's like with it's like say you're you're going for a job right and this job requires two rounds first round is a group interview the second round could be just five candidates left right if I'm a black person applying for something like this, in my mind, I have to check everything I'm doing times 30. My resume from top to bottom, each section at a time. If I write a cover letter, my cover letter, I need to make sure that like, I, I have to think about what they'll think of my hair, my locks, because they're not done. I have to think about I have PCOS, so I have scarring all right here. So I have to think about that. I have tattoos. I have to think about that. But also, I'm black. So it's like, they could see me and not even really be interested. And I know this happens with black people. Like, I know for me personally, people see Michelle and they're excited. But it's like, when they realize I'm black, they're like, never mind, girl. Never mind. I know that maybe wasn't the best example. But the point that I was trying to make is that when you are black no one cares really about your mental health even when resources exist i feel like it has to be the level of support that is needed for each individual person is different it people who think that it's that simple to just sign up for therapy are delusional and i do want people who can't afford it to have some type of resource and i don't know what that could look like but it's something that i've really been like trying to research and see how um because really it my belief is that when it comes to therapy or treating mental illness it should be a whole family that goes through the treatment because the issues that a child that you're working with it probably is a generational thing um I learned that with my family as well when I was going through treatment before and I just feel like when you are like a, a white woman or woman that speaks Spanish I don't know necessarily I wouldn't know about I don't know if I know like what the stereotype is around Asian women besides them being over sexualized as well but I know that I've seen even for example in my own family seeing black men absolutely be disgusted with a black woman not even being aggressive or mentally ill or having these issues that are any different from a non-black woman that they choose to deal with but the excuses that they come up with for those non-black women and the way that the women treat them and the things that they say and their behaviors is absolutely ridiculous so that is i don't know just thinking about that led me to make this video so going back to my point about mental illness and how it is portrayed um differently among women specifically in different cultures so in this article i'm reading there also mental illness is something that people don't really discuss their challenges about and um i'm thinking about i've been thinking about making a video about how my mental health has definitely challenged me as far as like socializing with people. I definitely can say that I've become even more isolated since COVID, but also when I locked my hair, that kind of like threw me into, I don't know this, I'm still just on this journey of discovering myself, discovering what I want, how I want to impact people or help them. How can I help my community? How can I help my family? And it's been so hard to like, people think like when you have 
mental illness issues and you speak about it that you're using it as an excuse right so if i'm saying hey all week right say if i'm supposed to have dinner with a friend friday i'm gonna give an example because i'm the most i'm the i'm the unreliable friend when it comes to plans sometimes um in my next clip i'm gonna just give an example of something that has happened to me personally so a couple of years ago i was in this relationship and this person was very abusive right um very manipulative very like into gaslighting they will pop up at my house unexpectedly like uh, just thinking about it is so bad but like also like me and this person we would drink every day together because that's what they like to do and if I didn't do that then I wasn't a good partner you know and I had told a close friend I was in this very like mentally I wasn't well right and I was going to therapy three times a week like this is what my therapist said I had to do because I was working through pre-existing trauma I've had a lot of trauma uh, that's for another video I always say that but I'm not a very open person and it would include my family so that's like a whole other thing um but long story short i told this friend i'm like hey i'm sorry i'm not as present i'm like really not in my right state of mind like i was at the point where i told like a few people this but like i said i was going to therapy three times a week and um yeah i was just struggling <laughs> that's all i can really say and i thought that by expressing that i was having these issues this person will understand that hey for right now our communication and our friendship it has to change and it's not it wasn't easy for me to do it but i i feel like um so uh, i'm sorry this is like something that is still like sometimes painful to think about because i personally have had a hard time grasping the true concepts around friendship and i don't know if it's just because like i know for me personally like anyone who's grown up in like abusive situations you have a hard time picking people in your life so it's not it's just like you you also have a hard time trusting yourself so when you don't trust yourself it's like sometimes you don't really know like who who should i be around i don't i just kicked my tripod but i was trying to say that this is something that's difficult for me to talk about because i went through a lot of um abuse in my life and i will not go into detail but to me i feel like people people will see um someone make a 30 second meme online about mental health right or post online about mental health and i think that everyone has shitty days everyone has bad days everyone can experience anxiety anger um sadness a uh, feeling of depression etc but when your everyday thoughts are bothered and like your ability to like actually keep things together and be an adult and survive that was something that like my life was like only getting worse so it's like on top of my mental health deteriorating i have this person that is also making it worse and i can't really show up to be supported it comes to the performative like takes that they put out there as far as mental health goes people only care about your mental health when you post something about it online when it comes to every day and you're in people's face and you're saying hey i'm struggling people will look at you and say it's not that big of a deal and it's like i don't you know what i'm saying i don't know 
how you can post a million posts about how mental health matters when you go through something but if you see someone who you have known for years has struggled it it blows my mind to think about how people still make things about themselves but also how people try to minimize your individual mental health experience just because they see a stranger post online about how they took their pills and now they're feeling good. Mental health care, just like health care in this country, is a really big luxury for most of us. If you really want to break it down, I pay a certain percentage out of each and every single one of my paychecks to go for my health insurance. But yet, when I went to go to the OBGYN just to visit after I had came from the emergency room, that visit was $1,500. I had to pay almost $300 just to be seen and I was not there for more than an hour. And for the procedure I need is $3,000 total, but it's $1,500 down. And it's like, the health issues I have also affect my mental health. So it's like, not only is my physical health bad, but my mental, you know, my mental well being is off. And so I have been in that place before. Like right now, I feel good, even though like health wise, I could be better. Um, I realized that if I work on my diet, at least for right now, that can help me kind of get myself back on track to figure out what I want to do. And I'm not really a big person that loves to take medicines. I would like to know like how I could do it naturally, if that makes sense. Um, and that kind of, I don't know, I guess that kind of <laughs> brings me to my point of where like, I don't know i just feel like people see you posting online and they forget that you do have issues and social media can be used as a way to cope with mental illness but people also perpetuate um these ideas that don't really exist so commenting under someone's post where they think they have autism and saying oh my gosh i have it too like i just looked it up online and it's like no we definitely need an action plan or a way to actually address people and what they're going through because it may not even be something that lasts as long or something that is actually complicating the things in their lives like their ability to pay bills or to be present in relationships well i know i'm just jumping all over the place when it comes to this conversation but that's just because i didn't really even think about the many layers in the relationship that exists between mental illness and social media i think that social media can contribute to mental health problems or like, yeah, I definitely do. If you think about someone who is online stalking someone, right? That they, maybe them and this person met once, right? At an event and they got this person's like social media, but then they decided to stalk them everywhere and then start messaging them and start doing all of this crazy, crazy stuff that I do want to talk about is how people I don't know I feel like the internet in general just makes everyone a hypocrite because it's so easy to comment on a post of a celebrity and make yourself feel better by commenting something that is rude nasty uh, angry comment whatever right and you know i feel that people think because you say something online there's no responsibility in real life and that's the thing with the world a lot of people don't understand that the world is small um i've run into people in other places so like say if i went to another state i've run into people i know like you just don't know um who you're who you'll run into i think that people kind of forget that like 
every choice you make there's some type of consequence so i'm just gonna end the video here um because yeah i didn't have really i always say oh i didn't have really much to say but when i really started to like peel back the layers of how technology itself and like this digital age that we're in how um i don't know just how it's a, so many sad people and people are exposed to so many traumatic things like seeing dead bodies or murders or like the stuff of the war like it's just so much and of course people need to be exposed to like a certain extent of things that are happening but when you get online there are certain people controlling that so like you see the same old things and it's like no wonder someone is depressed because this is their fourth time seeing a black person get shot and killed on their timeline and they're black so it's just like i don't know if y'all have any any thoughts please don't hesitate to leave it below and i will see you on my next video bye Thank you.